There we are again. Welcome back. And as I promised in chat already, we are here with a very big special guest. And that is one of our voice actor that joined us today for the tournament. Sven Plate, introduce yourself. Uh, where might people know you from? Yes, I'm uh, doing dubbing for, I don't know, 40 years now. I started in 1978, so it's quite a long time. Yeah. And yeah, my most famous role, I think, is Max Bunny which I do since 1994. Uh, Wesley Crusher or Will Wheaton from Big, uh, Big Bang Theory or Star Trek Next Generation, or Dora Map or Gwizdo from Dragon Hunters. I did a lot of different stuff in the last years. I did some anime also, but I think Bugs Bunny and Will Wheaton are the most important roles I think I did. Yeah, but also for the Yu-Gi-Oh viewers, of course, which we are mainly having here, hmm. where might those know you from? Okay, then it's Esparoba, which I did. To 20 years ago, I think, yeah. 2002 or 2003. Uh, yeah, that was also an int interesting role for me. Yeah. I can't remember it too much, but it, <laughs> I think it was great. Was, was it the first anime you did, or did you do anime before? I did. Uh, it was not really an anime, but for it, me, it was kind of anime, Captain Future. Yeah. I was Ken, the little boy, <laughs> and then I did like smaller things. I was in Pokemon. I was. Tapiomon and Digimon, uh, but it's also big roles. But I had some some stuff before. But this is really I can't really remember everything because but, it's a lot. But so um, you you are not really so you did the role, mm -hmm. but you aren't really involved with Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Have you uh, ever played the game yourself? Uh, not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah no worries. It, it's fine. When Absolutely. I grew up. Uh, we didn't have all this stuff. We sure. didn't have anime, we didn't have games, uh, we didn't have uh, cell phones, yeah, uh, yeah. DVDs. I was just, I grew up with three programs on TV and uh, no games at all. So it was a different time. And so totally. I think you have to grow up with it. Then it's Absolutely. really, you have it inside your heart and it's very important for you. But when I was like 20 or so, I think the thing started with like Pac-Man or small <laughs> things like this. This was all we had then. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, chat, quick note. If you have uh, every, any questions to Sven, just definitely make sure to tell us in chat and we can absolutely address them to him. But uh, first of all, uh, you told me earlier that uh, people regularly approach you making you sign Esparoba cards, right? So that's definitely yeah. still happening, right? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even know that those cards existed. I have, <laughs> since last year, I have a, a channel on TikTok and yeah. Instagram. I saw that, is, I saw it. And I present the dubbing actors. So very often I present actors from, uh, voice actors from uh, Digimon or Yu-Gi-Oh, One Piece, Naruto, all this. Before this, this was not really big names yeah. for me, but now I start to understand. Yeah, you're, you're in the scene now. You know yeah. your thing, you know your stuff And for then sure. I, I was invited to conventions, Comic-Con, for example, in Dortmund or in Germany, several now in Switzerland or Austria this year. And then some people bring me those cards. And I think it's as a Roba card. I don't know which card. Uh, I heard it's not the most important card, but they want me that I sign those cards. And this is the only contact I had with Yu Gi Oh! because I did Yu Gi Oh! 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I, did, I forgot about it. Maybe, Chad, can you help us out? What is one special card that Esparoba uses in the anime? Maybe we can figure it out together. What would be the one special card from Esparoba? And then we have another uh, another question in chat. So how do you get how did you get into voice acting? Did you like plan it or was it more, oh, more of an accident that you no, jumped into I it? I wanted to be a diplomat. Oh, wow. I went to the foreign office when I was 18 oh, yeah. because I had uh, I studied Russian a little bit and uh -huh. Spanish and uh, French at school. So I wanted to be a diplomat because also political stuff uh, was pretty interesting for me sure. but I started as a kid so I always did uh, also dubbing and when I didn't uh, make it to the actual profession as a diplomat because I failed the last test yeah. then I thought okay go back to dubbing mm -hmm. but I started originally because I'm from Berlin mm -hmm. and in the school uh, where I was uh, there was we have a very famous uh, series in German, in Germany, the three Fragezeichen, the three question yeah. marks. And one of the guys, which is Justus Jonas, was Oliver Rohrbeck, and he was in the class of my sister. Oh. And the mother from uh, from Justus Jonas, from Oliver Rohrbeck, uh -huh. uh, helped out uh, and uh, uh, took care of uh, children who were, work who were acting in films, for example. That's and when fun. when uh, she started to do this, more and more companies asked her if she had children. <laughs> and so she started the children business for films. 
<laughs> so your school then became a voice acting yeah. school, basically. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, Andreas Fröhlich, Bob Andrews one, was in my class, or so the fun. German voice of Kate Winslet was also in the class of them. And so there are a lot of people who do yeah. all this stuff. And uh, then it started in 1978, then I used to uh, act in a theater. Yeah. And one of the actors then told me, don't you want to start dubbing? And I didn't really know what is dubbing. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, I give you an address, you can go there. I was 12, I think. And then... Uh, Crazy, that's so introduced. young. Yeah. And then I started, and then I did, many people don't know it, but it was Kramer versus Kramer, mm -hmm. with Dustin Hoffman and Mel Streep. And I uh, voice acted the little child, I was a son. And then it started to get more popular, and uh, yeah, that's what I do from then. Yeah, and I mean, you didn't look back from there, right? You enjoy it until today? Yeah, I mean, it's always, you have good times, bad times, you have some crisis at the moment. We don't know exactly what's happening with uh, AI. Okay, yeah, true. We don't know. Like, That's a big topic in your Yeah, it's very well. important for us because our uh, our job is in danger of disappearing, so we don't know exactly As what's happening. As many are, true, true. Yeah, but at the moment I still have work, and uh, then we had the strike last year in America, first the authors, then the actors. Mm -hmm. So for some years they didn't really produce in the United States, so we didn't really get a lot of uh, stuff from America. I was lucky because I did some Korean v uh, okay. Korean uh, series now, for example, but in general, it's always some good times, some bad times, it's uh, up and down, but in general dubbing is uh, very important. For sure. Till now in Germany, who knows what will be in five years, but at the Absolutely. moment it's still okay, I think. Very, uh, speaking about good times, one question in chat. So have you ever met a famous person that you were dubbing? Was there any connection? I didn't meet Max Bunny. You didn't? Oh. Neither is Esper Hobe. <laughs> I, was, I was doing a lot of, of uh, uh, cartoon stuff yeah. or anime stuff. But uh, the only person I would really like to meet is Will Wheaton, yeah. Wesley Crusher. Uh, so they always invite people from Star Trek or Star Wars at the Comic Cons, for mm. example. But till now they had William Shatner, they had all the other people. But uh, Wesley Crusher till now but wasn't true. invited, so I don't but know. Those conventions are always a big meetup, right? Like yeah. all the voice actors, all the famous yeah. voice actors, of course, yeah. as well. And all this anime stuff, all these conventions, I was really getting big. Yeah. Some years ago it was like a niche, it was something for geeks and nerds, everybody looked. More, more mainstream. Yeah. Same thing with Yu-Gi-Oh, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah like for, sure. for example, Dokumi is the biggest convention in yeah. Germany. In Düsseldorf last year, there were 155,000 people. I mean, that's not a niche. This is two big sold out for Olympic sure. stadiums uh, in three days. And this is really changing. And I can see how many people now come up to me now and ask me for a selfie or uh, an autograph before like some years ago, nobody came, yeah. but because of my social media channel, so yeah. it's getting a little more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, so definitely make sure to check out Sven Flater on TikTok and Instagram, right? And YouTube. Yeah. And YouTube as well. So It's called the Ein Minute Star, the One Minute Star, because in general, in one minute, I present voice actors from, uh, I don't know, uh, Jennifer Lopez to, uh, I don't know, Light Yagami or something else from every Death Note or everything, a lot of enemy titles. Fun for you too, because you're meeting so many different yeah. people, right? That's yeah. so fun. Yeah. The whole of Germany. I mean, the center of dubbing is Berlin, yeah. but also the older series were done in uh, Hamburg, uh, the Munich, for example, mm -hmm. One Piece, Sailor Moon, all this stuff is Munich, Naruto is Hamburg, and then sometimes it's difficult to meet all the... Interesting news as well, so people can actually realize where that stuff was dubbed, yeah? Because yeah. usually you don't know those kind of information, that's kind of fun. Yeah, in Berlin, I know everyone, I think, in general, the, the most important ones, yeah. but before that, from Munich or from Hamburg, I didn't know any one. Yeah. But now, because, for example, One Piece is getting so big in Germany at the moment, so if there are conventions, there are really long queues, people, we had last year the Dokumi, and the most important or the most known person is Tommy Morgenstern. Hmm. He's a German voice of Son Goku, yeah. the Dragon Balls, and last year people were queuing up up to eight hours. And they paid 50 euros for autograph, <laughs> selfie, wow. and voicemail. In three days, people were really, it was like Crazy. an eight hour queue yeah. just for dubbing for voice. Yeah, voice it's artists. absolutely crazy. So this was impossible some years ago. Yeah. So, uh, one last question. Uh, would you say voice acting in the different countries is different? Is like German voice acting something different to American voice uh, acting? I think the difference in general, I would say the quality of voice acting in Germany is pretty high. Okay. But, uh, this doesn't mean that they're not also in other countries. They're a good uh, series. I think it depends a little bit of the series. We have some series which are really well dubbed in Germany. Okay. And some others, especially if they're older, they didn't really take care so much. Now it's getting more important. Yeah. And you have a big community. And if there is a mistake or so, everybody writes, oh, that's bad and so. But before, it wasn't so interesting. But fair, now it's fair. getting really big. So I think, but Germany is pretty good, I think. Okay, cool. So, I don't know. Are you down to maybe give us a little... Uh, 
one of the anime characters yeah. here that you could uh, do for us, or maybe Bugs Bunny, whatever Bugs you like. Bunny. And of course, you do it in German for the yeah. German fans that can now enjoy maybe okay. getting back to the child today. It's just a little, if you like. Hallo Leute, hier ist Bugs Bunny. Ich bin gerade bei der Convention, aber hier gibt's keine Möhren. Ich glaube, ich gehe bald wieder. Tschüss. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sven, for joining. That was a very lovely interview. And okay. everyone, we fixed the camera setup for the featured match as well. So we will be back for round number three with another featured match. So don't go anywhere. We will be back in like five minutes or something. Okay, bye. So your Yu-Gi-Oh! time where we were actually playing wasn't that long ago at that point, right? It was. It was. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So we are playing at the beginning, basically. Exactly. Okay. No, I mean, I, I, um, I stopped playing to 13 to 14 ish okay. fair enough like my last deck has been a light sword deck but i saw a few here i think <laughs> but maybe they were just trading <laughs> I think they were rather yeah. just trading, actually, yeah. yeah but yeah, uh, so uh, Aigami for Yu-Gi-Oh! But exactly. on top of that, ah, where, yeah, yeah. where is uh, more exactly. of you Full happening? Full circle, yes. right? Um, so you might have heard my voice, if you speak German, if you listen to German dubs, um, in Haikyuu, um, I voice dub for uh, Hinata Shoyu. Um, then in Attack on Titan, uh, I was Armin. Um, in... Oh, Shunibio in um, Dragon Ball Z Kai. There's so many things, yeah. but yeah. And also, I think Spider-Man as well. Yeah, I've, I've heard about that. That was pretty that's, cool. That's movie. right. Um, I'm allowed to voice act for Tom Holland. In, oh, that's pretty insane. That's the pretty, Sony pretty cool. Sony Marvel movies, yes. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, so yeah, uh, you were really, really, really hyped about actually, and you actually yeah. brought it yourself, opening one pack here, right? So I mean, you haven't opened one of those in quite a while, like so let's years. go on. Like honestly, like in 10 years. So yeah, I've asked everyone and they were so nice to supply me with one of those booster right. packs. It's one of the, it's German though. So if I don't know the names, you might have to help me out because I, sure. I can only read them sure, in German. Of course. So it's the Age of Overlord. Yeah, that's the newer set. Which, uh, is there like a special technique? I've always did this and then opened it, them uh, like this. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I would do it the same. Uh. I mean, if you just open a lot of them, because sometimes you just have like a whole display or something and just keep up you ripping just rip them just whatever, apart. just get them out of there. Okay. But if it's just for one, that's easy. Okay, what do we have? Okay, let's start with a magic card. Oh. Uh, Lila Rap. Yeah, Lila Rap. Exactly. It's a permanent one. Yep. All right. All right. Common one. Okay. Yeah, we know that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 We hope for a secret rare. Yes. Or an ultimate nice. rare. I always like the ultimate rare, whether like embossed and beveled. Sadly, there are no ultimates in this set, but a secret rare is possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's okay. a trap card. Um, mistune of something, probably. Yes. Yeah, so of the Tina. The Tina trap card. There we go. Is that good? All of the but... common cards aren't really that important. It really is only about the a foil. Fusion you're card. Oh, a, nice. a fusion card. But it looks like a earthbound something. Earthbound servant geo. Yeah, yeah. So like the best card you could basically pull would either be yeah. a, a completely new rarity, which, which you probably have not even seen in your life mm -hmm. because it's a quarter century rare, because Yu-Gi-Oh has turned 25 years, so they made a wow. special rarity for that. So that would be really cool. So let's hope from that singular booster. Uh, also, uh, in terms of secret rares, like SP Little Knight is a card that's everywhere right now, which you might also want to have. Okay, yeah, I, I keep them all. <laughs> Um, so another trap card that I'm not going to translate. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the same actually. Luka Samsara. <gasps> Ooh, an ultimate that's a nice rare. one too. It's actually an ultra rare. Yeah, ultra rare, ultra rare. That's a cool one for sure. And I'm not going to show. No, I'm going to show you. Yeah, it's ja Vanquish Soul Jao Long. It's actually a good card. A good that card is being played in the meta game oh, right that's now. A, it's a new type. It's Worm. I've yeah, never seen a Worm true. card. There were no Worm counts back in the day. You're right. You're right. That actually is a good card, I'm telling you. I love my <laughs> life so much. And has they have they always um, have this holo effect over the start? Uh, I think so, yeah. Ah, okay. That has always been the case. Yeah, but Jialong is a cool one. And then a couple more comments, of course. Yeah. Some decent Xyz card, right? Yeah, that's Xyz. I mean, Xyz card. Seems like you you learned all you and need to know. Three Xyz magic cards. Let's go, <laughs> let's go. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, let's Woo. get back uh, to your profession of um, dubbing. So you're doing this, of course full-time professional yeah since almost 27 years now Ooh, yeah i started very that. young when i was a little small boy what does that mean how young uh, at the it? age of six or seven wow. i started and yeah. what was the coincidence that brought you to dubbing because obviously at six or seven you're not like i'm going to be a voice actor yeah, or right, was that the case right. no 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 no. <laughs> i had no idea that this existed i think the first years that i've worked in this industry i 
didn't even know what it is about. Yeah. I just did it like a hobby, yeah. basically. Um, so I've been, none of my family is in the acting business or in the voice acting business per se. So I've started, I've learned, I grew up with my grandparents, that's important. Mm -hmm. cool. And since they're an older generation, they wanted me to like be well, well educated and uh, Christian play the piano, blah, 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 learn an instrument. So I went to a music school and the music school was led by a lady um, who is the mother of also two voice actresses. Oh, okay. And she uh, connected, she, she talked to my gra uh, grandparents and she was like, oh, your son is speaking a very good German. So she connected me with the film industry with one studio that had like a children's casting going on Fair. and I've went with uh, 30 other children to this casting 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 and um, yeah I think I've did a pretty good part. You made it. I have made it. <laughs> and you have never looked back still enjoying it to this day? Yes. Too? Honestly yes. It's a very um, versatile industry. Mm -hmm. Just imagine like each and every day you can just slip into another role. You can just be another character. It helps with anger and depression yeah. as well, I yeah, think, sure. because you can let it all out, you know. And so I'm very happy with this job and I always try to um, stay on the path and follow up my career, career-wise, cool. which is I, I try to study something, I skip that, and then I started full on voice directing as well. So um, this is like my, my main thing in life, actually. Okay, so you're not only... Uh, dubbing yourself, but also you're kind of behind the scenes a little bit exactly. and actually being a little bit more of a director there and uh, exactly. What is more for you at this point? Are you doing more directing or is it more dubbing? I think it's the mixture that okay. makes this interesting. If you can direct, you can just imagine it like a birthday party. You just invite all of your <laughs> friends, all of the people that you like basically, yeah. and then you're working together. That makes work does not feel like work anymore. And sure. um, so that's that's pretty nice. Um, but from time to time, especially a lot of times, uh, working on a project on your own is incredible and, and, and voice acting itself feels very nice. Yeah. You can experience yourself a lot. Yeah, sure. We have a cool question from chat and that is, uh, uh, what would be a character that would personally like to dub? Nah. It could also be someone that has already a voice in German, yeah. but is there someone you would be absolutely thrilled to do? Sure. Um, so there's an anime called <laughs> Soul Eater. Okay. I'm a huge fan of Soul Eater. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have liked to voice act for one character. I don't even care. Maybe maybe Death the Kid would have been in, in a nice addition. Huh? And also, this might have been more interesting to, to the huge mass of people who are watching. Um, <laughs> Avatar: The Last Airbender. I would have. I was as as a kid. I was in the casting for Ang for the role of Ang, um, but I've um, uh, another colleague got it. Who did a brilliant job? But yeah. this was this would have been something that I'd sure. like to do. That would have been great. And uh, also, kind of similar question. Have you ever met any like? Uh, uh any of the people you are actually dubbing, any of the roles, has there been any connection? Unfortunately not, uh -huh. unfortunately not. I've, I've been in the studio when Sandra Bullock went into the studio. I've, I've, I'm not the voice actor of Sandra Bullock, but this is like my my, my celebrity yeah, it's event. Moment, yeah. And I've been like 10 meters away from Tom Holland actually, okay. but the, um, the bodyguards kept me away. And I was like very kindly asking, like, I don't want to disturb anyone. I just want to say hello. Thanks for paying for my rent for the last <laughs> six years, basically. But uh, no, I, he had to concentrate, which is pretty fair I think for sure yeah, but yeah. maybe in the future who knows absolutely I mean seems like your voice acting journey is far from over still going strong let's hope let's maybe hope. with another Yu-Gi-Oh role at some point who knows with another uh, yeah. I would say yes yeah absolutely so working with the Yu-Gi-Oh game though with the Yu-Gi-Oh dub was that special in some way was it different from any other dubbing things you did or was it just basically the same I mean Coming from an, from 10 years of experiencing the trading card game, yeah. that was of course special to me. It was nostal it, nostalgic a little bit, right? It, exactly, yeah. exactly. It, it brought back a little of the of the charm of the game to me because yeah. I, I, I've, I've not played any ever yeah. since. Um, but yeah, I, I think working on it was diff not, not very different in the sense of the work itself because we're it happens the same whether I, I, if I if I do a real life show if I'm doing a cinematic movie if I'm doing an anime if I'm doing a cartoon I always try to give my best I yeah. think every one of my colleagues of does it so um, it's always been the same the, the only thing is with anime since it's a different culture um, it sometimes depends on whether you get the the Japanese dub before that you listen to before you're copying you get it. the feeling basically exactly. right? yeah. I think it's better than the English or the French stuff because yeah, you're more more close to the original. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So you're really paying attention to little details like that, I which try. is very much appreciated. I try. Sure. Uh, so 
thank you so much for your time. And uh, people in chat were already asking, is there some way to find you on the internet? Do you have a social media handle or maybe <laughs> even a YouTube channel or something? Um, uh, yes, I'm on Instagram, basically. Mm -hmm. You can find me under my name, Christian Point Zeiger. Oh, that's right that's right. how you can find me. And I'm in a collective. We're playing a German version of D&D, Dungeons and Dragons, oh. with a lot, a lot of other uh, voice actors from Germany. That sounds cool. Um, and you can find us under Dice Actors on YouTube. Oh, cool. Dice Actors on YouTube. So there you go. Thank you so much for the interview. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for the insight on voice acting, on dubbing and everything. Enjoy your new Yu-Gi-Oh cards that you I got will. here. <laughs> and you guys, we will see each other very soon again for round number six in the, in the tournament. Don't go anywhere. We will be back soon.